Supreme Court nominees spent the day on Capitol Hill meeting with Republican senators. The Senate Judiciary Committee expected to vote tomorrow to advance Amy Coney Barrett's nomination. Democrats likely will try to delay the process, but like the votes to stop her confirmation. Republicans are aiming to have a full Senate vote on her confirmation Monday, just eight days before Election Day. And as that vote moves forward, there's a little doubt that Judge Barrett will join eight. Uh, there is not, no doubt, I should mm -hmm. say, that she'll join eight justices on the U.S. Supreme Court bench, completing the group of nine. The high court steeped in tradition appears often mysterious at times. It does. One tradition is clear and out front for everyone to see all the time, part of the time anyway. WGN's Julian Rue is here with more on the history of the justices' black robes. You know, it's something we don't talk about very mm -hmm. often, and yet it's in our face all the time. Let's talk about this. Justices' robes are more or less the same, no matter what cor courtroom you are in, now anyway. It started as a tradition carried over from the British courts centuries ago. Their simplicity, part of the message that holds true even today. I apply the law, I follow the law, you make the policy. Judges are not partisan. Have you committed to the president or anyone else that you will vote to repeal the Affordable Care Act if confirmed by, uh, to the court? Absolutely not. I was never asked, and if I had been, that would have been a short conversation. Among the many topics Senators grilled Judge Barrett about, the Affordable Care Act, racial bias in the courts, and then came the hard-hitting question about the history of the justices' black robes. In the beginning, justices used to wear colorful robes that identified them with the schools that they graduated from. The Supreme Court nominee went on to say Chief Justice John Marshall back in 1801 changed all that. He decided all justices should simply wear black. To her, today, the robe symbolizes this. The black robe shows that justice is blind. Most, if not all, justices would likely agree. Chris Schmidt has made a career at Kent College of Law studying the U.S. Supreme Court. And one thing about the court, uh, it's very proud of its traditions. Chief Justice John Marshall setting the tone with the black colorless robe still relevant today. A unified front, you might say, despite the score on the board. He felt like the court to be more powerful need to speak in a single voice. So he was the one who really pressured the, just, the justices to issue, whenever possible, a single unanimous opinion. And on most of the big cases, he would actually write it himself. So the idea of having the all black robes, having things be less personalized, uh, is very much in line with his larger agenda for the court. Rebecca Pallmeyer is the Chicago Federal Court's first female chief judge. She remembers slipping on her black robe for the very first time. It is such a rush. And it is, I think, it, it's kind of sobering. You put on the face of what you hope will be, um, will, will be decency, dignity, and justice. And then there are the judges who couple dignity and justice with some flair. In the mid-90s, U.S. Supreme Court Chief Justice William Rehnquist added some gold stripes to his sleeves, modeled after a character in a Gilbert and Sullivan production. At least that's how the story goes. They were on display during the Clinton impeachment hearings. On this vote, the yeas are 59, the nays are 41. When women were finally welcomed to the high court, Sandra Day O'Connor gave her robe a feminine touch. She added a lace jabot. The year was 1981. Twelve years later, O'Connor encouraged Ruth Bader Ginsburg to do the same. As you can see by looking at the robe that's on display, she was uh, uh, petite but, but mighty. So only a custom robe for late Justice Ginsburg. Most other justices get their robes made at this factory in Salem, Virginia. And her collars, as we've all come to know, had meaning. Like the sparkly one Ariel Weininger is wearing from the Illinois Holocaust Museum. She thought the black color and the shininess and almost the spikiness of it was appropriate for dissent. It came from the store Banana Republic, if you can believe it. Still, a woman of purpose, Justice Ginsburg was going to make even her robe and its accessories count, sending a message each time she wore them. I am still a woman, and you are going to respect me in the role in the same way as those males who were the only ones on the court until 1981. For men and women alike, a uniform representing neutrality, humility, and unity. It shows that once we put it on, we are standing united symbolically, speaking in the name of the law, not speaking, of our, speaking for ourselves as individuals. 
Here's a fun fact. The justices' black robes, they are tradition only, not required attire. Other traditions for the justices may be familiar to you, where they sit on the bench, who's assigned the opinion, and shaking hands inside the robing room before they go out to hear each new case. A little show of sportsmanlike conduct yeah. we'd like to see more of these days. All right, Julie, thanks. You bet.